In this video, we're going to look at what's changing in React 19. Now, Andrew Clark, one of the core members of the React team, teased out this tweet a couple of days ago. And we're going to read through this, and then we're going to jump into the blog post that the team put together to see what's coming um, for the months ahead or for the next major release of React, which is React 19. Now, he said, by the end of 2024, you'll likely never need these APIs again. Use memo, use callback, or memo. These are all going to be handled with React compiler. We're going to talk about that when we go to the blog post. Forward ref is going to be just a ref prop instead of having to wrap your components with the forward ref function. You can just pass the ref as a prop. The React Lazy is going to be replaced with React Server components and Promise as a Child with the introduction of streaming and suspense. There's no need for um, React Lazy. The use context is going to be changed into using the use hook, which you can pass a context or even a promise to use on the client side. And then the context provider is going to remain, but it's going to just um, change into context because we no longer would have the use context hook, we're going to just then use the context. So there is no consumer side to this context. So the provider won't make sense. So there's going to only be a context uh, component that you can wrap and then use the context inside of any component that you want. Now with this uh, teaser or with this as starter, let's go to the blog post that the React Labs or React team puts out. First off, if you haven't read this or the previous blog posts that they had typically explaining what they've been working on i i recommend reading them they're jam-packed with concepts and new things that the team is working on and they usually link to different resources and videos that is extra helpful if you are curious to learn what the team is working on so Let's go to the first thing, which is the React compiler. Now, in short, React compiler is to automatically memoize our React applications without us as a developer needing to use the use memo, the use callback or memo um, from React, which is considered to be a manual memoization of uh, your React code. If you go back to the previous post that they had, they mentioned why they're thinking of introducing this new compiler. React can sometimes re-render a lot. And we used to put guardrails for React not to re-render a lot using callbacks or hooks like use callback and use memo to memoize some values, arrays and functions and computations um, that haven't changed from a render cycle. So React will, won't render, for example, a specific children where, where the propped uh, where the prop hasn't changed. Now, this differs a bit from the philosophy of React being a declarative programming library where you're supposed to just say what you want. So we're focused on what and then React would take care of the how. But with uh, manual memoization, you're actually getting into the how section of how should React now optimize your applications. So the goal is to create a better developer experience by doing this memoizations automatically because they're hard to maintain and they're easy to get wrong and it requires extra work for you on top of your React components to now optimize your applications. But they also provide a default better experience for the users because your apps are now more performant or optimized. So that's the first thing that's coming up. It is now deployed to production on Instagram.com. So if we were going to see this in uh, the next major release or it's, it's going to be coming soon, it's out of the research and development. It's now uh, working in production. Now, the next section is about actions. As you might have already known on the channel, if you've been following along, we've talked about actions, server actions as a way to pass data from client to the server or mutate data on the server, exposing functions to the client to perform mutations on the server. This is now going to be a stable feature in React 19. Now, actions allow you to pass a function to the DOM element. 
such as a form. This action function can operate synchronously or asynchronously. You can define them on the client using standard JavaScript or on the server using the use server directive. Now, when you're using an action, React will manage the lifecycle of the data submission, providing hooks like use form status and use form state. I do have videos on the channel for these two hooks and pretty much anything else that you would need to know about server actions. So I'm going to include links in the description or in the cart. So look for them if you wanted to dive deeper into this uh, lifecycle hooks. Now, by default, actions are submitted within a transition. Now, transitions are a way to mark state updates as non-blocking. So your current pages stay interactive while the action is still processing. Uh, we check the use transition hook that and this start transition function or transitions in general in a previous video. So definitely check that out if you want to understand what they are. But since actions support asynchronous functions such as a request, now transitions are also supporting async and await syntax. This allows you to show a pending UI with the is pending state that is returned from your use transition hooks. So you can show a pending UI while an asynchronous request like a fetch is still uh, processing. Now, alongside actions, the use optimistic hook was also introduced for managing optimistic state updates. This is allowing you to optimistically update the UI while we're awaiting the response of an action, which then automatically reverts to whatever result that comes back from the action. Again, there is a video on the channel about use optimistic hook that you can look to understand what it is and how we would use it or how it ties into this whole server actions or actions concept of doing data submissions, controlling the state with the use form of state, getting the result or the status with the use form status, implementing use optimistic UI for optimistically updating the UI while the action is in process. And also knowing that all of this is happening in a transition, which keeps our pages interactive while this is happening. So definitely look into the videos that we have had on the channel, but this just brings everything together in this major release to be now all stable. Now this new features or any new features in future are going to be available on React Canary before they go to the latest stable Semver release. And that's why we have been able to practice with them or use them in Next.js because Next.js uses the Canary uh, version of React and we had access to this directives before they're even in React itself. So things like use client and use server directives, things like server actions, um, suspense, metadata, or actions in general, as I mentioned, um, are now features that are on the stable channel and they would be released on React itself. So if you're using or if you're looking to use these features outside of a framework like Next.js, they're ready to release. Now, the next major version of React, as I mentioned, is going to be React 19. It is going to have some major changes or breaking changes with the way that suspense, document metadata, and some of these new features would work. So you can have an eye in the future months to see what is going to be needed, what is going to be changing, how to adapt this new client features, how to build support for React server components, in the coming months. Now, another feature that the team is working on is this off-screen components. They have renamed this to activity. This is referring to components that um, are off-screen or are not are inactive. For example, you have a model, the model opens up, but the page behind it is in an inactive state. Or when you want to remove a component from the tree, there's two ways to do it. One is to remove the component from the tree, which causes you to lose the state. And the other way is to don't remove it from the tree, but makes it make it invisible so that you can keep the state around. Now, this is a new feature. They're calling it activity. So you can mark a component to be active or inactive. So the component is around, the state is there. And then uh, all the uh, updates are going to be deprioritized for inactive components. So React would just post them for later. Um, and then one, once they become active, they're now in sync with your 
uh, hold React 3 without having to unmount and remount these components and lose the React state or sometimes the DOM state for these components, for example, scroll position. So it's this is something that will be, uh, I don't think it will be in React 19. This is something that they're still in research um, to develop. But the rest of the stuff that we talked about is going to be in the next major release of React. And that wraps the changes that are coming in React 19. If you have been using Next.js, probably most of these changes are familiar to you because we've been using them inside the app router. As I mentioned, the app router is using React Canary version with all these features that are now going to be stable. But if you have any questions, hit me up in the comments, like always, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.